Welcome to our Good Friday evening services at Ohio First Lutheran. Let us pray. Merciful God, your Son was lifted up on the cross to draw all people to himself. Grant that we who have been born out of his wounded side may at all times find mercy in him. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Gospel reading is taken from the Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 27th verse. And then they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull. The sixth hour came, and there was darkness all over the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabbatini, that is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some of the bystanders hearing it said, This man is calling Elijah. And one of them at once ran and took a sponge filled with sour wine and put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. And behold, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth shook, and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. Coming out of the tombs after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. When the centurion and those who were with him keeping watch saw what had happened. They were filled with awe and said, Truly, this was the Son of God. The Gospel of our Crucified Lord. On Monday, Jesus had entered the city via the northeast side, the Mercy Gate, a mist a parade of people waving palms and crying out, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Friday morning, there was another parade on the west side of Jerusalem from the headquarters of Pilate the governor north to a hill called Golgotha, the place of the skull. The streets were lined with people then, too. Some were mocking, while others cried, both along the parade and in following the guests of honor, if you could call them that. There were three men carrying crosses. One was the same man who was honored by the palm parade. Quite a difference a few days makes. Proof to all, you don't mess with an oppressive government or you wind up dead in a nearby park. It's probably 9 a.m. when the parade arrived at the hill with onlookers both taunting and grieving as a cross was lifted with Jesus of Nazareth on it. Darkness at noon a foreshadowing of something terrible coming. And by three o'clock, Jesus had cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Certainly, the sin of the world was placed on Jesus, your sin and my sin. That would make him feel alienated from God. But also, the agony and pain of being crucified, of not being numbed by the myrrh, would also cause Jesus 
to feel an absence of his father. Jesus cried out with a loud voice and breathed his last. My translation says he gave up his breath. He gave up his spirit. It's a hint, as the other gospel writers have noted, that Jesus was in control even to the end. He willingly died, laid down his life for all people, for others, for you and for me. And the curtain of the temple, which separated the Jews and the Gentiles, or maybe it was the curtain that separated the Holy of Holies, the presence of the Lord himself. That was torn from top to bottom. In either case, whichever curtain, it removed the barrier that was separated people from each other and separated people from God, signifying that all people can approach the throne of God to come into his presence in person. At the end, the Roman centurion probably the one who supervised the pounding of the nails and the lifting of the cross, proclaimed that surely this was the Son of God, a Gentile proclaiming faith through the Holy Spirit, that Christ had given his life a ransom for many. For him, a Roman, for you and for me. Tomorrow, we will talk about Jesus who was taken down from the cross and laid in the darkness of the tomb. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, you have shown your glory to all nations in Jesus Christ. By your Holy Spirit, guide the church and gather it throughout the world. Help it to preserve in faith. Proclaim your name and bring the good news of salvation in Christ to all people. We ask this through Christ our Lord, the crucified one. Amen. Let us go in silence. Thinking of the wondrous love of our God, the creator of all things, who would give his only son that we would have relationship with him. Amen.